our eye on the goal, continue to run forward, push this thing forward. The people of Illinois are sick and tired of politics as usual. And if we do that, we win, our kids win, our state wins, and our country wins. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for coming out today. Tom Kokel with the Prairie Advocate here in Rockford at the Prairie House, Prairie Brew House with uh, Congressman Don Manzullo and uh, Congressman Bobby Schilling. Uh, nice to see you gentlemen here and uh, Congressman, see you. Good to be here. Uh, what do you think of the race so far with uh, Bobby? Well, Bobby's run a great race. He um, is a great congressman. I think this is his 43rd, 44th trip to Rockford. Yep. <clears throat> it's, it's somewhere uh, somewhere near 50. Uh, his opponent has been here, I think, half a dozen times. Uh, so Bobby's always had a tremendous uh, interest uh, in, in Northern Illinois. And that's good to the people um, that, that I've represented. I think Bobby, uh, in the 16th district got divided, you represent uh, approximately about half of Rockford. And then all the way to the Mississippi River. And I've represented all of Rockford and all the way to the Mississippi River. So there's probably, what, about 100,000 people more yeah, yeah. that I represent that you'll, that you'll be representing in Congress. You're, uh, you come a long way 40 sometimes during the campaign season. What, what do you think of your new district? You know, I, I really like it. It's actually a lot more compact. Uh, than what we're currently representing. Uh, there's a lot more manufacturing. What's really neat about this district is here in the northern region, you know, we've got folks that are doing business with people in the most southern region. So it, it's a really nice tie-in, uh, and it's basically trying to get everybody together, find out where we can help improve uh, more manufacturing in the district, of course. Yeah, that's something that we've seen and heard from the constituents, is not, not only the wonderful job that Congressman Manzullo has done uh, for the district in the years as far as uh, manufacturing, job creation, but the difference in the Democrats saying that they will create jobs and the Republicans <laughs> saying we will create the environment for jobs. Well, government can't create jobs, but government can destroy jobs. Uh, and the President's done a great job of that with, with um, his Affordable Health Care Act, or otherwise known as Obamacare. And as I've, I've, as I've traveled to this congressional district, and the same with Bobby, people are terrified. I know of companies that, that will lay off and get below 50 uh, so that they're exempt from uh, Obamacare. I mean, they, you can't grow an economy when people are afraid to, to grow their businesses. And so it's, a, it's this tremendous uncertainty. Uh, I mean, half the students who graduate from college can't find jobs. I mean, why would you want to continue with, with those types of policies that the president has been imposing on us uh, and then say that it was the policies of George Bush that caused us to get here? It just doesn't make sense. I, I think one of the things that Don and I, that we share in common is we both come from the restaurant background. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, we've had to hire and we've had to, uh, you know, deal with customers to see exactly how we can improve our business. And we understand that, you know, every time we have a financial problem in our business, we can't just raise the price of our product. We've got to troubleshoot, find out what the problem is. In our case in America today is the problem is overregulation and overtaxing. We need to simplify the tax code and make darn sure that we're, we're not overregulating our American companies. And, and that's the thing is, is, is getting out there and really holding the, the government uh, down, basically. One of the things that's near to my heart, but not so dear, is the uh, Thompson Prison. Uh, Congressman, you've been involved with that for, uh, you know, not really indirectly, since it was a state prison during your, your term, now that it's a federal prison. What, uh, what do you feel the odds are that it will actually be funded to open? That's the real question. Well, it, 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 it's going to happen. I, I found out about it uh, on Friday, November 13th of uh, 2009. Is when I was informed <clears throat> that there's going to be a press conference saying that Gitmo was going to be moving to Thompson, Illinois. There have been at least eight or nine votes in the House of Representatives and on a bipartisan basis, upwards of 80 to 85 percent of the members of the House have stated that they do not want Gitmo to come to the United States. I mean, this is not a Republican issue or a Democratic issue. It's a national security issue. The same basis that uh, 
Secretary Sebelius of HHS, who was the governor of Kansas, said she did not want Gitmo coming to, to Leavenworth in Kansas because it would endanger the entire area. So we've always been concerned about that. Uh, on the other hand, if there's a way that we can make sure that, that Gitmo uh, cannot be emptied out, that those people are coming to Thompson or the other part of the United States, this prison is long, due, uh, long overdue to open up. And Bobby and I have tried various methods, even saying, lower the price. I, I contacted the governor and said, give it away. Just give the thing to the federal government. Let them open it up, and it will create, what, four or 5,000 jobs, Bobby? Yeah, 1,100, and then the spinoff is about then the, spin, the, the, sp the spinoff from that. And Bobby and I were criticized for saying, well, the state of Illinois shouldn't have to bargain uh, and give, uh, have a bargain sale for the prison. Well, excuse me, for 11 years it's been sitting there waiting to open. And anything that we can do to get that thing open, we're going to do, and at the same time make sure that people from Gitmo don't come here. Well, apparently it happened. And um, uh, it's not a matter of, of pointing fingers, but Dick Durbin moved on it. We've had a lot of talks uh, with Durbin, and he said, now we've got to open this thing up. And I said, fine. I didn't realize that he would use the method that he did to open it up, but under the laws of, of, of the federal government, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's legitimate. And Gitmo isn't, uh, to modify Thompson according to the international standards for prisoners, which is a standard that's used for Gitmo, because I've been there and I've seen it, it would cost, it would cost millions of dollars to do that. And there, there, there are no plans to do that because there's no money to do it. And besides that, this is the president's state. It's about time he does something for this state for economic development, right, Bobby? Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, and that's the one thing that uh, Don and I's concern was, is that if we didn't get some type of a deal out there, that we'd have a, a prison that would sit for another 10, 20 years, we'd end up tearing it down. I mean, it's a state-of-the-art facility. It was Don Manzullo, myself, and Senator Mark Kirk that actually went out there last year yep. saying, recommending, hey, this needs to be opened up as a federal prison. You know, people tend to forget about that. But, you know, we've been doing everything within our power to do it. Uh, the big thing is, is now it's transpired, uh, but now we've got to figure out ways and means. And that's the thing that frustrates me about Washington, D.C., is, is part of the, the, the by plan on this should have also had in there, okay, what's the, the way path forward to get it open? Uh, that's a business sense that Don and I carry. Uh, that wasn't there. So basically what we've done is we've transferred the $804,000 of turning lights on and off and flushing toilets now to the federal taxpayer. So we really do need to, to get this rolling. You know, this is $202 million of direct and indirect uh, economic impact. I mean, this is huge, 1,100 people working. It would really ignite our area in a 50, 100 mile radius. Well, what, what impressed Bobby and me, coming uh, from the restaurant business, is the fact the kitchen. kitchen. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I mean, it was like, uh, we, two, were two, two, we were in heaven. We were in heaven, looking at like, that kitchen. It was actually my brother and parents that ran the restaurant business. I ran my own oh, law okay. firm, but I was, I was raised in the business, and I was the day manager uh, for the drive-in manager, for the drive-in restaurant. Uh, okay. for a couple of years when I was in high school. And so we, we shared that restaurant background. But I, I know when Bobby and I saw that equipment, Bobby, how much? Millions. Oh, my goodness, yeah. Millions. It, it, it definitely a million dollars worth of uh, restaurant equipment. At least, at least. So we said at that point, um, it wouldn't make a good bed and breakfast. No. Uh, it's not designed. They had like, I don't know how many iron jacketed steam kettles or what you make soup in. Yeah. But I mean, they were like, I don't know yeah. how many gallon. I mean, I bet yeah. you they were 100 gallon Easily. pots Easily. that you, you cook soup in. It keeps it from burning. But uh, I think, why well, can make a nice pot of chili in there? <laughs> but what's important is the fact that in the end, it did take a bipartisan effort yep. uh, to keep it alive, uh, to keep up the interest. And sure, there were political differences going on, but, but those, as far as I'm concerned, have been put aside. Uh, and we, put, we can thank Senator Durbin for that. Yep, you bet. Uh, he, he came in, he said, because he called me, he said, Don, this has got to open. So uh, he made it, made it come to pass. But you know, we helped keep it on the front burner with him uh, to make sure that uh, it didn't get lost. Well, a lot of the Democratic candidates for state seats that I've interviewed uh, more or less ridicule the Republican concept of giving the prison away. I simply say the, go the federal government would have had 165 million to open it. You know, now bipartisan, it's definitely gonna take a bipartisan effort what happens uh, if Romney wins, if Obama wins? It's, it, it's past that point because what's gonna, what happened is uh, 
uh, through the procedure used for it, it now becomes uh, under the jurisdiction of the Bureau of Prisons. And the Bureau of Prisons treats it as any other prison. And they'll supply the, uh, the people uh, and, the, and, and the operating, operating money uh, comes out of the Bureau of Prisons uh, budget. So it'll be fine. It's, it, at least it's in a situation where uh, it definitely is going to happen. The purchase money has already been put down in court, and it's on a quick take basis, so it shouldn't be that long. In fact, have they started hiring you, Bobby? Not or? yet. Okay. We haven't heard anything on that yet. Well, this is a close race, Congressman Schilling, and uh, you've got uh, a huge district now. Uh, what, what are some of the main things that you're going to be focusing on as a congressman in a new district, especially up here in the Rockford area? I think the biggest thing we're going to continue to work on is, is creating that atmosphere of certainty. Uh, you know, one of the things that we accomplished in, the, in this last this Congress that we're currently in is uh, we, we got the public-private partnerships. There's a cap on our Rock Island arsenal, and uh, you know, this is something that they've been trying to get done for 10 years. They couldn't get it done, and we got it done in five months by working in a bipartisan fashion. So we're going to take those experiences that we had just in these last two years and bring those to Rockford, Illinois, to this region. Because as I look around here, I mean, you look at um, you know just some of the facilities where it's you know whether it's aerospace, just defense in general, some of the work that some of the companies are doing uh, with Caterpillar or John Deere. Uh, you know, it's really trying to get those all tied in together. And I think that if we can get our tax code simplified, uh, get it down, you know, and eliminate some of the loopholes and make sure we're not over-regulating. I think we can, and then another thing is our community colleges are going to play a great role, and our Rockford is already doing some things here uh, to tie in businesses with the community college, uh, Rock Valley, uh, to where they're figuring out, okay, here's how we need to train these folks, because we've got a problem with skill sets of, you know, people that are 50 on up getting ready to retire out with no one there to fill in for them, whether it's engineering, somebody running CNC machines, uh, what have you. So it, it's that kind of work we're going to really focus in on. Great. Well, in closing, gentlemen, uh, Congressman Manzullo, what would you like to say to the constituents of the 17th District? Well, they are already well served uh, by having Bobby and Congressman. I, I, I don't uh, spend as much time with him uh, without believing the fact that this man is an excellent Congressman. He's a small businessman. And you see people in Congress and a lot of them come in with no, no life, uh, no life sets. I mean, they haven't done anything. And I don't say it's a critical matter, but it, and it's not their fault. It's just they just haven't done anything such as running a business. And when you uh, when you've run a small business as Bobby has, uh, I've seen what he does in terms of of, of his votes. Uh, he looks at things through the eyes of a small business person. He has to meet payroll. I mean, I don't know if people realize the significance of having to bring in money and, and meet pay payroll. He can't go in the back room uh, and print money. He has to actually bring, bring the money in. And so I see that experience with him because it's anybody who has to meet payroll uh, is very conservative with the, in the manner in which they spend money. And I see that in Bobby. Uh, he's already done a great job of ingratiating himself with all the new people uh, that I that I use to represent, plus uh, he's doing a great job representing the people where he is from now. I mean, he blew out that last election by ten points. The people didn't think that was possible, uh, and he did it. And he's going to he's going to be successful again. How about you, Congressman Schilling? What's the outlook for the next week? You know, next week's going to be very, very busy. Uh, I'm so excited because when I look at this area, you know, I just think about America in general and that if, if we're given just a, a fair shake, a level playing field, uh, we can compete and beat anybody in the world. And when you've got 95% of our customers residing outside of the United States of America, look, nobody can make a better product than we do here in the U.S. We've got the best workers. It's just if we can get that opportunity to get out there and do things. So I think our, our better days are definitely ahead of us here in this country. Uh, it's just if we can get our government out of the way to let us do what we do best, and that's put people back to work. There you go. That sounds good, gentlemen. Thank you Thank for you. your time. You bet. Uh, good luck in your retirement. Uh, I'm not retiring. Good. good to hear that. Yeah. We Thank won't you. let him. <laughs> Thank you, Bobby. Thanks, Don. Appreciate it.